exciting Bradley basketball on 25 Sports is brought to you in part by your favorite Ford dealer. See why there's more to a Ford. By Paradise Hotel Casino, making winners every day. By the new Dodge at your Dodge dealer. By your local Hardee's restaurants. By SefQ, where membership counts. By University Ford, we always put you first. And by Bradfield's Computer Supply, service is what we sell. Charles Dickens could have written this episode in the War on 74. It's the best of times for Bradley going after a Missouri Valley Conference championship. It's the worst of times for Illinois State trying to keep their heads above water and above the 500 record. Hello and welcome to Bradley Basketball here on WEEK and a special welcome to our friends joining us tonight on Fox Sports Chicago. Lee Hall along with Ron Ferguson. And uh, Ron, this is always a special night when these two teams get together. I'm a Peoria native and an ISU grad. You, the former uh, athletic director of Bradley, former ISU coach, any time that you have two teams that are within 39 miles of each other, you're going to have a heck of a rivalry. Well, I think it's the greatest uh, collegiate rivalry in the state of Illinois and maybe one of the best in the Midwest. And the games are always well fought. They always aren't well played. But they're really out. Everyone hustles. Okay, and of course the hero of game one, the first meeting last month, Bradley guard Rob Dye. He hit a three-point shot, missed one, got his own rebound, and hit the three that won it for Bradley, 69-68 at Redbird Arena, Ron. He is Bradley's leading scorer, and he is their go-to guy, although he's been struggling a little lately. Well, every game that he scored 20 points or more, Bradley's won. That seems to be the key, and uh, tonight I'm sure Illinois State will do whatever they can to keep Dye under 20 points. The Redbirds coming off back-to-back -back regular season and Missouri Valley Conference tournament titles. They have struggled this year mainly because of injuries. They lost their second leading scorer and leading rebounder L.D. Murdoch to a knee injury. And Tyrese Bryson is their leading scorer, and he's been playing hurt all year, too. And, and Illinois State lost two games when Tyrese didn't play. He's one of the top scorers in the conference, and he and I probably the two best offensive guards in the conference. And, and really, they how they go, that indicates what their team's going to do. North Carolina and Duke might be the best rivalry in the country on a Missouri Valley Conference scale. That's what we have tonight. We'll have the starting lineups for you in just a minute. Back at Carver Arena in Peoria, Illinois State and Bradley. Here are the starters for tonight's ball game. First for the visitors from Illinois State is walk-on Ryan Crowley and Leroy Watkins at the forward. Sean Riley, the transfer from North Texas at center and at guards. It is the freshman Victor Williams and Illinois State's leading scorer Tyrese Bryson for Bradley. At the forwards, it's Jerome Robinson and Abba Coweta out of Winnetka, New Trier. Matthew Lee at center, Eric Roberson and Rob Dye at the guards. Dye making his 52nd straight start for the Bradley Braves. We'll have the tip off when we come back. <laughs> Stay tuned for the post-game report following tonight's game. Yeah. We're back in Peoria, Illinois State, 13 and 11 overall, 5 and 8 in the Missouri Valley Conference. The Redbirds struggling with injuries. They are coached by Kevin Stallings in his sixth season. He is 120 and 59, 6 and 5 against Bradley, only 1 and 4 here in Peoria. He is the 1998 Missouri Valley Conference Coach of the Year. Jim Molinari in his eighth season as head coach of the Braves, 129 and 99. He spent two years at Northern Illinois, six and nine against ISU. His teams run 41 and 24 in February. They come on strong as we approach March Madness. Let's take a look at our keys for tonight's ball game. Uh, first for the home team, Bradley. We got to match. Uh, ISU is coming in here, Lee, like a wounded lion. So we've got to match their intensity right away. Now let ISU get off to a big start. Uh, Bradley must defend the three-point shot because in games that ISU has done well, they've hit a lot of threes. Must contain uh, Watkins, Leroy Watkins, 270 pounds. Keep him away from the basket and off the offensive boards. And Bradley must force the tempo and take advantage of their superior depth due to the injuries. And for Illinois State. ISU must try to contain Diane Shire and limit him under 25 points. They, uh, Illinois State must get outside shooting from Bryson, Cartmill, and Riley and use their size and more experience inside. And avoid foul trouble. There's Ron's keys to the game. 
The fans are on their feet here in Carver Arena. Bradley and Illinois State set the, uh, the attendance record for this building with 11,027 two years ago, and they are on their feet again here tonight, uh, possibly a record-setting crowd. The opening tap controlled by the visitors. Illinois State, and they're traveling red, white, and black. The Braves crowd will stay on their feet until the Braves allow any points. Rob Dye, the Missouri Valley Conference leader in steals with his first steal of the night. I wouldn't play surprised if, if I'm not surprised that Illinois State's playing a zone. This is a way to conserve their uh, lack of depth and stay out of foul trouble, and I'm not a surprise at all. They try and go inside to Coita, kick back out, Jerome Robinson, the miss. And Bradley can't control the rebound. Eric Roberson comes up with it, and the whistle on Illinois State, Sean Riley. Playing a zone against Bradley or even mixing up your defenses I think is something that will bother Bradley and I think Illinois State uh, is smart in doing that. Right now they're playing a box and one now. They're covering die. Vic Williams playing Vic Rob Williams die man to die. man. And the Braves turn it over as they try to get it inside once again. We've played a minute, no score. This is Bradley the, and Illinois State. This is the first uh, boxing one we've seen against Ty this year, and uh, and I'm sure that Coach Mo has uh, has uh, worked at uh, worked on it and, and uh, was expecting it sometime along the way. Leroy Watkins has trouble with the double team. He takes up a lot of room. <laughs> I knew what you're thinking. Watkins offensive rebound. Got to keep both teams starting cold. Got to keep Watkins off the board. He's so darn big in there. It's really hard to force him out wide. He's big and he is strong. Bradley had great success against a kind of a straight zone against Evansville earlier this year. Well, the shot clock's down to nine here. Die with it, double team, three point attempt, bounces high and no good. Coita got a hand on it, and Bradley gets a new shot clock. Matthew Lee gives inside, maybe one pass too many for Bradley, but Coita scores. Good job by Coita to hang on to that ball in there and picked up the foul at the same time. Well, so far, good work on the offensive boards by Bradley. That has been one of Illinois State's problems this year is, uh, is rebounding, uh, and you wouldn't think so with that big Watkins, but uh, the teams neutralize him and screen him off the boards, and, and it enables some of your other quicker players to get the rebound. Abba Coita going through a couple of pretty big trees in there. Seven-foot Sean Riley. And the heavyweight, Leroy Watkins, Coita finishes the three-point play, and right. Bradley is on the board. Bradley's in a full-court press, trying to pick up the tempo a little bit. Crowley to Bryson, fouled by Coita. Coita could have done a little bit of a better job. He shouldn't have stayed right, in, he should have just got away from him. He's tall enough that he could have probably blocked the shot and not picked up the foul if he just hadn't got right in his way. Tyrese Bryson goes to the line. 6'2 sophomore out of Stephen Decatur High School. 17.2 points a game. I believe he's the second leading scorer as a freshman that, uh, that Illinois State's had, uh, or was about to be as a sophomore, but his first year with the team. Sat out last year because of academic ineligibility. And he's missed a couple games this year because of injuries, and I don't know if he's 100% uh, right now, but uh, he looks pretty good so far. He's wearing a sort of a splint on his left leg. He has a stress fracture in that leg, uh, suffered the injury in the weight room in the offseason, but he's played all year, missed just a couple of games with it. Bradley gets it back to Dye, who hits his first bucket of the night. Rob Dye, 18 points a game. Good job on the offensive board so far by Bradley. Bradley, the early three-point lead. ISU's got some good three-point shooters. Ty Tyrese Bryson is a great three-point shooter. And so is Riley, the big man, the seven-footer. This is Bryson. And Coita the rebound. Bradley looking to build on a three-point lead. Alley-oop to Matthew Lee. Uh, great job by Dye. And Matthew Lee did a fine job of catching the ball and stuffing it in the basket. 
Matt Lee shooting 55% in his last eight ball games, and that will that will add to the percentage. That brings the crowd to its feet. Yeah. Leroy Watkins muscles his way open down low. Well, Bradley's got to do a better job than that on Watkins. He's posted up low there, and they're not able to get in front of him. He's so wide, it's hard to get around him. 6'7", 265 out of Chicago Corliss. Eric Roberson, the fake, takes it to the hoop and in, and that's something Jim Molinari says he wants to see more of from Eric Roberson. Well, especially against that zone. Illinois State, obviously, is not used to playing a zone a lot, and, and they're, they're really not moving very well in the zone, and I think the boxing one kind of confuses their coverage on the zone, too. Roberson has struggled lately from three-point range after being surprisingly accurate from there this year. Jerome Robinson just inside the three-point line. Coita gets his hands on another offensive rebound, but can't control. I don't think Coach Moore, that was a little quick to be shooting the ball down there. It was an open shot, but uh, I think he just as soon get the ball in Robinson's hands or get it inside. Bradley will try to make Illinois State foul a little bit because Illinois State doesn't have the depth that Bradley does. Coita almost came up with a steal that time. Victor Williams, the freshman from Kansas City, with two. Well, Robinson, that was not a very good job of defense by Robinson. Williams went right around him very easily and got into the layup. 9-6. We played almost five minutes. It's gone quickly. Bradley a game out of first place as Eric Roberson puts up the three-point attempt. He has struggled from the field lately. And it will be Bradley's ball when we return. Time out on the floor, 15.02 left first half. Bradley by three. The war on 74 is officially a shooting war now. Bradley, a two-point lead over Illinois State. But the Redbirds have come back after uh, I mentioned that it was a nine-point Bradley lead, and it was a key possession, and Victor Williams has come up big for Illinois State since then. Yeah, offensively, Victor Williams has really given him a lift. Uh, but defensively, they've gotten out of the zone, and, or the boxing one they were in early in the game, and Bradley was getting too many easy shots, and now they're playing their regular man-to-man -man defense, and, and they've uh, tightened, the, tightened the defense up like a little bit now, and I, the game looks like it's going to be a pretty uh, nip and tuck game here, uh, at least the rest of this half. The Bradley scoreboard throughout the game on our telecast here in Peoria is sponsored by Graphic Express, your business printing resource. Senior Kyle Cartmill into the ball game. He's a senior out of Quincy, Illinois. Rob Dye gets his hand on that one. Rob, as we mentioned, the Valley leader in steals. He is now number seven in the country. He's dropped off a little bit the last few games. He was up to number three in the country. Well, with Cartmill in there, they've got another three-point shooter. They've got three great, Riley's four. They've got four really excellent three-point shooters in there now. Matt Lee with the post defense, knocks it out of bounds. I think Lee could have uh, intercepted that ball instead of knocking it out of bounds that time. This series dates back to 1904, but this has really turned into a rivalry after uh, Dick Versace arrived in Peoria as head coach and Bob Donawald in normal. Bryce in the miss, Watkins strong for the rebound. It counts and he'll go to the line. Well, that was one of the keys that Bradley had to do is keep Watkins off the board. And so far, he's been a real man there uh, at both ends of the floor on the rebounding. He is so strong. He benches 345 pounds, squats 565 pounds. I didn't know a bar would hold that much weight. But Leroy can throw him. Well, he jumps extremely well, too, for a, for a man his size. Can't convert the three-point play. Watkins with six. And we are even, 19 all with 1035 left, first half. Bradley now a game and a half out of first place in the Valley. Evansville, a 68-65 winner over Indiana State tonight. Die. The miss there, and it's Riley with the rebound. That was a good Seven shot. Seven-footer out of Texas. Die, it was a good-looking shot that Die got off. It, uh, it just didn't go in. He's going to have to keep shooting because he is so important to Bradley offensively. I don't think... Stolen by Rob Die. 
And he takes it all the way for the layup. Well, guy has it, uh, seventh in the nation in steals, and but the last four games he's only had about three steals, and so he's got two already tonight, Lee. He is now fifth on Bradley's single season steals list. He just passed Percy Hawkins, who was a number one draft pick of the Philadelphia 76ers back in 1988. Bradley has Good company. No, Bradley has no choice but to switch on all of those screens that Watkins is setting. Inside to Riley. Passes out of the double team. Shot clock at five. Williams with four. The defense by Cartmill with two. Yeah, with two. one. Three-pointer almost went. Illinois State hustles, but Bradley comes up with it. Eric Roberson kicks to Shire for three. Gavin Shire is fourth in the Valley, 46% from three-point range. And yes, Shire is on fire. Well, Bradley's made the last two baskets in transition. Another foul on Lee. But, uh, I believe if they keep trying to get the ball into Watkins, he, he could foul a couple of Bradley players out of this game if uh, they continue to do that. That is three personal fouls on Matt Lee. Well, Milo Kirsch hasn't played yet for Bradley. Here's a look at Bradley in transition. Well, you'd have never seen this from a Jim Molinari team three years ago. Milo Kirsch checks in for Lee, who sits down with three personal fouls already. Well, that's what happens with a guy like... Uh, and Riley can shoot too good there, and he just got completely open. They just have to switch on those when you play Illinois State. You can't sit back and, uh, and just let them shoot those wide open shots. Kevin Clancy into the ball game, number 12 for Bradley. Die. Rattles that one in and out. Kenneth Pearson the rebound for Illinois State. He's just into the ball game now for ISU. Reggie Hall in there for Bradley. Number 21, several changes as we approach the eight minute mark. Williams drives and pulls up. Missed everything. He saw Milo Kirsch coming over for help. Here's the alley-oop to Roberson, can't get it down. That's a couple of bunnies Eric Roberson has missed tonight. Pass was just a little bit too late. He didn't get it to Eric just a little sooner. Bryson for three. He is a better player on one leg than most players with two. 24 he was, all. He was on his way before his injury, so, you know, to perhaps leading the Missouri Valley in scoring this year, Lee. And, uh, and uh, his scoring average is down only because of his injury and the fact he hasn't played the minutes and had the opportunity to get as many shots. Roberson's open for three. He missed his last three three-point attempts in the previous two games. Uh, Bradley will be happy to see Roberson uh, hit one because it's he hasn't had many threes lately. The uh, last time against Illinois State, he was six for six from three-point land. Uh, Watkins is out of there now. Pearson isn't quite as awesome in setting the screens out there. Milo Kirsch hits the floor, guarding Riley. Roberson got a hand on that one. Now oh, Hartmill I... steals it away from him. Well, that was a... Silly. Roberson could have gotten whistled for a foul because he was hanging on to Cartmill right. to keep him from getting it. Bradley was lucky on that possession there. They should have uh, had a foul and also they made a very careless pass. We're under seven minutes to go now. First half, dies open for three. He shoot him just a little bit. Reggie Ball got needs. a hand on him. Well, when Dye struggles, he sometimes rushes his shot. Yeah, and he admits like that. The last couple of times, he's really rushed the shot. 27-24, Bradley. Hartmill for three. Kirsch had it. Riley gets it, and he's fouled. Well, Bradley, uh, Orbison had the rebound, and Dye kind of knocked it away from him and enabled Riley to get his hands on the ball and then picked up the foul. Milo Kirsch, his first 15 foul on Bradley. Sean Riley goes to the line. He is number one in the Valley, 12th nationally in free throwing at 88%, which is incredible when you consider he's seven feet tall. <laughs> he's an excellent shooter. If you give him any kind of a shot facing the basket from 15 feet, he's even an excellent three-point shooter. 
Gavin Shire back in for Bradley. Sean Jepson, freshman from Spring Valley Hall High School, in for Illinois State. I think Riley and Watkins both are fifth-year players, Lee, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Riley had to sit out a year after he transferred, and Watkins uh, had an extra year when he started with Bradley. Time out on the floor. Jim Molinari's Braves down to a one-point lead. Welcome back to Peoria, Illinois State. Back within a point, trailing Bradley 27-26. Prior to the season, Ron, Bradley talked a lot about playing an up-tempo game. We haven't seen as much of that lately, uh, except where it's really an obvious place for run. Well, I think that's because teams scout each other so much once you get in the conference play that they kind of know what you're doing and, and you have to be careful that uh, uh, on what you do and, and uh, I think you become more conservative as the season goes on. I think that's what's happening here. Rob Dye now, as we mentioned, fifth place on Bradley's single season steals list. Earlier in the year, he was on pace to break Willie Scott's single season record here at Bradley. He's fallen a little off that lately. Cellular communications from Carver Arena for tonight's Bradley basketball telecast made possible by our friends at Alltel. 27, 26, 6, 10 left here, first half. I notice they're playing Gavin Trier pretty tight. They're not, uh, they're not laying off a hip at all. Pass inside to Kirsch. The freshman kicks it out to Reggie Hall. 18-footer is no good. Illinois State can't control. Shire comes up with it. No call on the contact. Die for three. Well, there's a break for Bradley, but it's hustled by Gavin Shire that, uh, that saved the ball and gave a chance for Die to hit the three. So long to his mini slump. He was 34% his last three games. He is heating it up tonight. And the outside shooting has been pretty good so far. Cartmill. Cartmill answers. The senior with his first bucket of the night. They're four for six and barely five for nine. For three. Lancey's open for three. The freshman walk on from Niles Notre Dame. Little long on that attempt. Folks on Fox Sports Chicago tonight will recognize a lot of these young men out there tonight, a lot of them from the Chicagoland area. Cartmill for three. The senior makes two in a row, and Illinois State has their first lead. Bradley's getting a little bit confused on those picks, and they're leaving uh, guys wide open, and, and uh, Illinois State's hitting the shots. Against Southern Illinois, Illinois State. Kirsch can't hang on. Loose ball. Illinois State had a tough time shooting against Southern, and they had some shots. They just didn't shoot the ball well, but they're shooting the ball better tonight. And they say it was not caused by the defense, so they go to the possession arrow, and that favors Bradley. More substitutions. Milo Kirsch now coming to the sideline. Illinois State's hitting 50% right now, Lee, from the floor, and uh, Bradley's hitting about 45%, and uh, that's about the difference in the score. One of the officials tonight, to Lee, is uh, Ron Zetcher, who, who's a real veteran official, has worked a lot of NCAAs, and in, after suffering a big leg injury a couple of years ago, he's been out of the Valley the last couple of years, but we're glad to see him back because he's always been one of the top officials uh, in the Valley, in fact, in the United States. Bradley gets possession with 16 on the shot clock. Yeah, Ron Zetcher, Robert Staffan, David Hall are officials this evening. David Hall, in relation to you? No. There's a lot of us out here, though. The Halls are taking over. Kyle Cartmill whistled for his first personal, fourth team foul on Illinois State. There's David Hall, the official, Lee Hall, the announcer, Reggie Hall, the player, and Sean Jepson is from Spring Valley Hall. We're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of Lees, 
It's our version of the New World Order. Inside, Reggie Hall can't convert. Watkins had a hand on it. Well, he had a, that was a good shot, a good chance there, and, and Bradley couldn't take advantage of it because of Watkins' uh, presence in there. So Bradley's getting some decent shots, but right now they're having a problem. There's a look at the three-point shooting. Sean Jepson on cue, fires one up for Illinois State. Ron Zetcher says, foot on the line. Coach Malinari is taking a taking a 20-second timeout. Well, Illinois State's three-point shooting is uh, is really uh, hurting Bradley here, and, and, and Bradley's not doing a good job of, uh, of covering it. Stay tuned for the post-game report following tonight's game. Four thirty, our score. Illinois State with a four-point lead on the road. John Jepson had a toe on the line, but Illinois State is burning up the nets from outside. And Ron, one of your keys early was defend the three. And and Bradley's the leading team in the Missouri Valley at defending the threes. But the problem is, is Illinois State has four people that can really shoot the threes, and it's really hard to defend all of them. Our MVC Top 3 brought to you by Paradise Hotel and Casino, Career Steel, Steve Barnes of Tulsa number one, followed by Percy Hawkins and Larry Bird. Steve Harris. Three seventeen left, first half. Hall puts it on the floor, off the glass, and good. He'll go to the line. Nice, he's back at his own defense. Well, they haven't called a lot of fouls, Lee, and there haven't been a lot of turnovers in this game. For a game with uh, that's as intense and hard fought, uh, usually you have a few more turnovers. But uh, it's been a pretty error-free game and uh, and a pretty clean game. Reggie Hall at the line from Providence St. Mel, the same school that brought. Barney Mines to Bradley. Can't convert the three-point play. 34-32. Illinois State had gone on an eight-nothing run to take the lead. There's Molinari wants him to come out further on their shooter. Bryson blocked by Coita. There was a foul they could have called there. And Bradley can't come up with it. Looks like that uh, die was fouled there when he got the ball, but they didn't call it. 17 on the shot clock. And guess who pointed it out? The freshman, Sean Jepson. Very heady player for a freshman. Three-point shot. Somebody had a hand on it. Roberson got it. Bryson tipped it. Die comes up with it. Just what you'd expect from Bradley and Illinois State. Hard fought, good hustle, close ball game. Shot clock at 10. Hall gives to Coita with five. Jump hook, won't go. Watkins the rebound. Now Bradley's getting some good shots. They just can't get him to go down. And, uh, and that's a little bit of the difference why Bradley's behind right now. Leroy Watkins just dared Reggie Hall to shoot the 14-footer, and he wouldn't. The other thing you don't want to do against Illinois State is follow them because uh, they're, uh, they're one of the best free throw shooting teams in the league. Watkins inside. Can't get it to go. Not only in the league, Ron, but in the country. They right. are up to number eight in the nation free throw shooting. You don't want to foul, but you have to cover the three-point shooters. and. Kevin Stallings is running a nice little offense there that's giving Bradley a lot of defensive problems, and, and Bradley's an excellent defensive team, so. Hall, oh, again, in the lane, and a block called on. Oh, oh, we've got God. one call on the block and one call on the charge. Oh, 
One official called a block. Zetcher called a charge. Now they're going to talk it over. Officials are concurring. One called the foul on Illinois State and one called it on Bradley. We'll see what happens here. And now, Zesher confers with Molinari. And I guess they will stay with the charge. Most of that time that it happens, they give a foul on both players, and they, or they give no fouls, and they uh, just give it a hell ball situation and use the alternate possession rule, but evidently they didn't want to do that. 16 fouls on Bradley. That's the first personal on Reggie Hall. Minute 10 left, 34-32, Illinois State. Their first meeting has been a turning point in each team season. Bradley's gone six and one since then. Illinois State's gone one and five. Shot clock at eight. Now seven. Bryson with six. And a push on Rob Dye. And that puts Illinois State in the bonus. And we'll send Bryson to the line. Ryan Crowley back in, replacing Jepson. Shire back in for Bradley. It's a revolving door down at the scorer's table. Pearson in for Riley for Illinois State. Well, the only person that's in foul trouble is uh, Lee for Bradley. He has three fouls. Nobody else has more than one. Bryson, 85% free thrower. Made 16 straight earlier in the season. Bryson gives the Redbirds a four-point lead with 48 seconds left. Bradley's only shot two free throws so far, and, and Illinois State is a, a seven, seven for nine. So they've kind of built their margin at the free throw line here. 13 second difference in the shot clock and the game clock. But neither Dyer or Shire have had a shot in the last several possessions down the floor. And that's one of the keys for Illinois State. Roberson, tough shot. Coita had it. That wasn't a very good shot by Eric that time. Bryson comes up with it. Timeout, Illinois State. It's a 20. There's Kevin Stallings. Never been associated with a losing team in 23 seasons. High school, junior college. Played three years at Purdue. Then as an assistant at Purdue. Kansas and head coach at Illinois State never had a losing season. Well, he's had quite a record in, in all aspects of the game, and I expect him to continue that, uh, whether it's at Illinois State or wherever his future endeavors may be. He's an excellent coach and, and was a great player. I saw, I uh, scout, uh, recruited him in high school. That record might be in danger. The Redbirds 13 and 11. Stay tuned after the game. News 25 Extra continues our coverage of Bradley versus Illinois State. The post-game show, full night of the war on 74 here on WEEK TV 25 locally. Ten seconds left in the half. They go inside to Watkins. Fall away jumper won't go, but Watkins will go to the line. Reggie Hall called for the hole, his second. Defensive replacements ready to come in for Illinois State. Leroy only had two points in 14 minutes against Bradley in their first meeting. He was limited by that ankle injury. In that first meeting, though, Riley had 20 points, and uh, L.D. Murdoch, who has since been injured for and out for the season, also had 20 points. So it was the two big guys that hurt us the first game and hurt, and hurt Bradley, and now... Uh, this game has really more been the outside shooting. And Leroy Watkins is one of the great stories in college basketball. Lost a year of eligibility as a top 48 early 
but then regained that year by graduating in four years. A new rule. And Dye is fouled at half court by Vic Williams. A freshman mistake there with 1.4 on the clock. Well, there's that Bradley's not in the one-on-one, -on -one, so it, it wasn't a bad foul, really, when you consider it, Lee. Dye tried to get the shot off and uh, get three free throws for it. Shire for three at the buzzer, won't go. Illinois State goes to the locker room with a five point lead on the road at second place Bradley, 37-32. We'll take a look at the first half when we come back. Back at Carver Arena in Peoria, the second half just about ready to get underway. Illinois State leading Bradley 37-32. Here's a look at our first half stats. And Illinois State getting the better, it, a better of it from the field. They are 5 of 8 from three-point range. Bradley 5 of 11. Free throws, there's a disparity there, favoring Illinois State 8-1 to one at the line. Some of that because of the uh, inside superiority for the Redbirds. Illinois State out rebounding Bradley and the Braves with only two turnovers in the first half. Individual stats, first for the visitors from normal, Tyrese Bryson with 10 points, Victor Williams 8, Leroy Watkins 7, Kyle Cartmill 6, Sean Riley with 4, and Sean Jepson with 1 basket from the field. For Bradley, it's Rob Dye leading the way with 12, Eric Roberson with 7, Gavin Shire a couple of 3-pointers, Abba Coita, a 3-point play, Leon Hall with 2 each. That figures. Lee and Hall. And Lee Hall and Ron Ferguson. Well, Second half keys. Uh, the one key that we talked about early was defend the three for Bradley. They were not able to do that. No, and Illinois State, you got to give Illinois State credit. They ran a nice little offense there and, and created a lot of problems. And the quickness of Williams has really uh, surprised me a little bit. I didn't realize he was that quick. He's penetrating and getting the ball to the three-point shooters. But Bradley's got to get to the three-throw line in the second half. Uh, if they want to win this basketball game. You can't shoot two free throws. And I don't know whether it's taking the ball to the basket more. And, uh, maybe Bradley's trying to shoot, shoot too many pull-up jump shots instead of taking the ball inside. But with Watkins waiting for you inside, it's hard for you to get yourself disciplined to do that. 11,030 on hand here this evening. That is a new Carver Arena record. I wonder who counted it. Okay. Illinois State opens the second half with the ball. It's Bryson, Riley, Watkins, Williams, and Crowley, the starters in there for Illinois State. And a foul. And the bucket counts. Jerome Robinson whistled for his first. It looked like they had uh, Watkins and Riley both at the low post there to play in a double post. and. And they're just going to work the ball inside, and then if uh, we cover them, they're going to throw it back outside, and, and Bradley's going to have to play really solid defense now because they've got some catching up to do. Ryan Crowley, the junior from Naperville Central with the three-point play, and it's an eight-point Illinois State lead, their biggest of the night. They once trailed it by nine. Roberson inside the three-point line. Roberson's found his touch tonight. He has nine. Bradley could have had to shoot a little bit better than they did the first half and, and as I said, get to the free throw line. And they're fresh with Illinois State's offense. They're running a nice little offense and it's, it's giving Bradley a lot of problems. That lead tips it. Kalina comes up with it. Well, Illinois State shooting 50% in the first half, Ron. No team has shot, only one team has shot over 40% here in Carver Arena this year. Robinson can't make it. Die the rebound against Riley. 
Dye had Riley hooked with the left arm, but Riley gets whistled for the foul. And Dye got second. the rebound. Uh, Robinson, it looked to me like they're taking the ball right into the basket, and instead he chose to take the, the pull-up jump shot and missed, and uh, Bradley got the rebound. Or got a foul, actually. Matt Lee swung to the hole for Bradley. Bradley's back within four. Roberson will leave his. <laughs> Boy, that looks like one of my dunks. I'm always a little short on my dunks. Yeah, he only gets a three and a half for style points, but you know what? He got two on the board, and that's where it really counts. Eric Roberson with 11 after totaling just seven points in his last two outings. Two point ball game. Victor Williams left his feet that last time down the floor, Ron, and didn't really know what to do with the ball. He had no idea when he went up with it. Riley walked. Well, Bradley needs some help like that because, boy, if they get the ball into those two big guys, it's, it's tough for Bradley to defend that. Murdoch on the bench after uh, tearing up his knees, 6'9", 240. They had quite a formidable front line. Well, and look what, was, what kind of a team they'd have if uh, Rico Hill had to come back for his last year. Robinson left open. Jerome Robinson, his first two of the night, and we are tied again at 40. An 8-0 run by the Braves. Well, I sense that Bradley's playing a little more aggressively defensively. 11,000 plus on their feet in Peoria. Riley, elbow jumper, no good. ISU the rebound, tipped away, and a foul on Tyrese Bryson. That's Number Bryson. one on Bryson. First foul on Bryson. Gavin Shire checks in for Bradley, senior out of Burlington, Illinois. He has now jumped into third place on the Bradley Braves in scoring seven and a half a game. He replaces Dye. Well, Dye won't be out long, you can bet that, but you've got to give him a little bit of a breather because he plays so hard offensively and defensively. Now Victor Williams whistled for the foul. Well, all of a sudden now they call him a few fouls. In the first half, they didn't call hardly any. First on Williams, third team foul on ISU here in the second half. We played just over three minutes. Illinois State build an eight point lead right out of the shoot. Now we're even. Inside to Shire, foul committed before he went to the hoop. Riley whistled for his third personal. Well, Illinois State's picked up four quick fouls in the second half. Kenneth Pearson will check in for Riley, who sits down with three personals. And that's a key for Bradley to get to the free throw line in the second half. The first half, they got there one time. Robinson tries to back door, throws it to Coeda. Robinson saves it and goes into the front row of photographers. Matt Lee, top of the key. It's good. Matt Lee with six points. Now Bradley a two-point lead. I heard the coach Mo said no, 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 no until it went in. And then he said yes, yes, yes. Matthew Lee, junior out of St. Paul, Minnesota, has increased his range this year. Bryson fouled on the three-point attempt, and he'll go to the line. Eric Roberson whistled for his first personal. Well, that was an ill-advised foul, and too bad, because Bryson is just a, a great free-throw shooter. 
great shooter, but especially a great free throw shooter. Fouled on the 22-footer. Bryson will go to the line. He is an 85% three free thrower. That's Fifth it. in the Valley is 17 points a game. That's Eric's uh, first foul, and he normally has at least three by this time. He's fouled out of about seven games this year, and by far leads Bradley in fouls. Well, you put you put he or Riley to the line like that, you might as well just give them the points and don't waste your time shooting. Bryson had 28 earlier this year against Wisconsin. And the games that he scores high, he usually gets a lot of free throws because he makes almost all of them. Bryson with 13, Illinois State back to a one-point lead. 15-52 to play in the ball game. Seven for seven for Bryson from the free throw. Roberson in traffic, fouled by Watkins. All right, a chance for Bradley to get to the free throw line. Let's see whether Bradley can take advantage now of the uh, opportunity to shoot some free throws. Illinois State sure has, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That's an important part of the game. And I know when I coached, I said it drove me nuts to miss free throws. Roberson, 61% free thrower. His increased percentage from three-point range has not carried over to free throw shooting. I think Eric's been a little psyched on his free throw shooting lately because he's he has missed a lot lately and uh, he actually shot better from the field in the last uh, seven or eight games than he has from the free throw line and uh, and I know that gets to you a little bit. Junior out of Pittsburgh would probably be playing in the Big East were it not for knee problems. As a junior and senior in high school, he was being looked at, but those schools backed away and. Bradley found a gem. 15.44 left, we're tied at 43. Lee Hall, Ron Ferguson back in Peoria, Illinois State, and Bradley tied at 43. Thanks in part to the play of Eric Roberson, who has struggled offensively of late. This is how you get well right here. Although it wasn't pretty, it still counts. <laughs> well, the shooting percentages for the game have come pretty close now. Illinois State shooting 48% and 47% for Bradley. So now that's uh, evened out a little bit. And uh, rebounds are 19 to 18 in favor of Illinois State. Uh, Illinois State's had seven turnovers, only two for Bradley. Two turnovers for Bradley Lee would seem to indicate that they'd be way ahead the way uh, they've been playing this year, but uh, that's not the way it's uh, worked out so far. Bradley Trivia is brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Bradley's 10 largest crowds in Carver Arena. How many were against Illinois State? Well, we just had to update the answer. We will have that answer for you a bit later on. Look at Kevin Stallings, who says, well, some people say that you can throw out the records when Bradley plays Illinois State. He doesn't believe you can. However, if you look at the scoreboard, I think Kevin may have to adjust his thinking tonight. <laughs> Well, most of the games are very competitive. It, it, I can't remember too many blowouts in this series. I, I have a tough time. There it was. There might have been a couple games, Lee, you know, that were, looked like blowouts right at the end when there's a lot of fouling and somebody makes a lot of free throws and it looked like a, a, t a ten point game or something like that. But most of the time, they're uh, well contested almost to the bitter end better in for the team that loses it. It's not better in for the team that wins. And the series has been very close all these years. Goweda whistled for his second personal. Yeah, the local viewers got to look at uh, all that as Matthew Lee picks up his fourth personal. And he fouled Bryson, and that's the guy you don't want to foul. Matt Lee trying to help out on the screen, and uh, tough, to, tough to back off a guy who shoots it as well as Bryson does. He can't right. leave him open. And most of Bradley's fouls are on shooters and uh, who are shooting, and consequently they they go to the line. Well, he missed one. Maybe we talked him out of that one there by telling everybody what a great uh, free throw shooter. <laughs> well, he is. He made seven in a row. You know, he's actually. This is amazing to me. He is actually left-handed. The only thing he does right-handed is shoot basketball. Hmm. And look, jeez. 
He's awfully good at that. 14 points for Bryson. Illinois State back up by one. Rob Dye hasn't scored here in the second half for Bradley. It's been hard for Gavin Shire to get a shot, too. He gets one here for three. It's off the mark. Victor Williams hop out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds. That was kind of an ill-advised play by Williams. Should have let the ball go out of bounds in that case, Lee, and he would have had it uh, get it so close to the basket. Most coaches want their players to get the ball because you don't know how the official's going to call it, but in that case, uh, that was uh, probably not the right decision. 14-59 left, 44-43 Illinois State. Hope you're enjoying Missouri Valley Conference basketball here on WEEK and on Fox Sports Chicago. Shire picks up the loose ball and almost makes the three. Well, now, Leroy left, Watkins didn't bother diving after that one. They let that one go and uh, got the ball back anyway. So that mistake by Illinois State was uh, uh, no consequence. Now and Riley's out. Riley's got three fouls. I'm sure that's why he's out. Roberson very close to coming up with a steal there. Shot clock at eight for Bryson. Kicks it out to Williams with five. Four on the shot clock. Three inside with two. Crowley with one on the shot clock. Makes the layup. Well, Illinois State scored several baskets, you know, as a, with the clock running out. They've done a great job. Uh... Rob Dye blocked by Leroy Watkins. Kawita, the offensive rebound, can't convert. Gets it back, blocked again by Watkins. Leroy Watkins, the only player in ISU history to have 100 blocks and 100 steals. Now Coach Malinari wanted a foul in there someplace, but didn't get the call, and uh, Bradley does get the ball out of bounds. Four blocks in the ball game for Leroy. The only player in Bradley history to have over 100 blocks and 100 steals, Mitchell J.J. Anderson, who just had his number retired here in Peoria Saturday. Roberson drives baseline, blocked by Leroy Watkins. A little late getting over right. to the baseline. When, he, when you run into Leroy Watkins, uh, and the guy that's hurt is Roberson. He's Three personals on Watkins. I mean, that was just a... Chicago Bears don't have a, a defensive player that can hit like that, Lee, I'll guarantee you. I mean, he wasn't trying to injure uh, Roberts or anything. That's just how solid he is. And uh, you bounce off of him, and you're going to be hurt. Well, Bradley trainer Sean Payne out to take a look at Eric Roberson. That's three fouls on Watkins now, too, uh, Lee. He's taking him out of the ball game, but that's something that could tighten up. Uh, the trainer's looking at it now to see if he can keep it loose. Now you talk about Leroy in football. Well, he's not it's gonna. not too far-fetched. Uh, Marcus Pollard went from Bradley, never playing college football, and now plays for the Indianapolis Colts. I thought that was I thought he was trying to shoot the ball there. Evidently he wasn't. No argument from the Bradley bench. No, evidently not. New shot clock for the Braves. They trail by three. Die. Looks to even it up. Can't convert well. it. Bradley came out hot at the beginning of the second half and then now has cooled down. And then, in fact, uh, both teams have slowed down a little bit here. They only stayed in a little foul trouble with the big guys with three apiece, but Matt Lee's got four for Bradley. Coita having trouble matching the muscle of Sean Riley down low. Ten on the shot clock. Bryson for three. That's off. 13 minutes left in regulation. The Braves a perfect 11-0 here at home this year. Kyle Cartmill called for the hand check. His second, that's the seventh team foul on Illinois State. So Bradley in the bonus with 12.44 to play, Ron. Well, that's kind of just the opposite of the first half. I, uh, I don't understand. Uh, I don't think the game's being officiated any difference. It's just that uh, 
Illinois State's coming out uh, maybe a little more aggressive the second half and they're getting called for some of the fouls. Jerome Robinson at the line. Sophomore out of Mississauga, Ontario. Yep. And the 74% free thrower misses the first one. He has struggled, his entire game has struggled since he hurt his knee earlier this year. Of course, getting, getting the free throws, it doesn't mean much if you don't make them. Neither team has scored lately. Pearson missed the dunk. Well, there's another break for Bradley. And he was wide open for that one. Suddenly, this has turned into a defensive struggle. Kawita wants it, gets it. Good job by Hall. He penetrated and gave the ball to Kawita and went up strong with the ball. The junior from New Trier has five. Bradley back within one. Cartmill's open. 4 3. Well, that was Cartmill's the same thing they did the first half and uh, penetrated and then. Picked it out, and Cartmill, when he gets wide open, he's as good a three-point shooter as we have in the league. Cartmill's third three of the night. Uh, they're back in the diamond and one now. Uh, I saw I saw Coach uh, Stalling signal the, the diamond and one defense, so that's, that's going to protect Riley a little bit in there, uh, foul wide. I think it's a triangle and two, Coach. They're trailing Die and Shire. Crowley got a hand on it. Pearson comes up with it. Robinson takes it back away from him. Look like... Uh, Robinson may have fouled that time there. See what you think. Aren't they staying man-to-man -man on Diane Shire here? It looks good. Yep, yep, you're right. Uh, I'm good at geometry. That's how I figured oh, that man. out. All the air ball. 12 on the shot clock. No reset. And a foul on Riley. That is four on Sean Riley. Well, Bradley offensively now, it uh, looks like they're a little bit disorganized against that uh, defense. The diamond and two. And Coach Stallings got into that defense to protect Riley, and Riley picks up the foul. Sometimes the best laid plans go astray, <laughs> Lee. Abakoita at the line. Played for Mel Sheets at New Trier. Former Bradley Brave Rick Malnati now the head coach there. He was an assistant when Abba was a player there. And he misses the free throw. Bradley getting to the line, not converting. Well, when you miss your free throws at home, that, uh, that's certainly not uh, a good sign. And Bradley was perfect down the stretch at Northern Iowa. The final minutes of regulation and in overtime. And they've struggled here tonight in the last couple of minutes. Shot clock now at 10. The Bradley bench yells, don't foul. Cartmill with five, with four, with three. Crowley comes up with it, with one. He beat the shot clock a minute ago, but comes up off the mark this time. Die, stutter step. A lot of contact, no whistle. Illinois State comes away with it. We've played half of the second half. Illinois State, a four-point lead. Well, I'm not sure where Dye was going with the ball that time, but uh, probably wasn't a very smart move, but he was trying to make something happen. Cartmill loses his footing. Kenneth Pearson, the miss. Kawita and Hall fight for the rebound, and Illinois State gets it. New shot clock for the Birds. Jepson nowhere to go. Hall gets it, takes it away, and gives it to Die. Well, that, that was kind of a strange. That both teams kind of took turns giving the ball back and forth to each other. And nobody got a shot. Die hasn't had a point the second half, and I'm sure I think he's only had one shot, Lee. You gotta get him back in the ball game here somewhere. Illinois State back in the man-to-man. -man. Hall turns in off the glass and good. Good move by Reggie Hall. He has four points. And Bradley's back within two. Hall comes off the close to getting offensive fouls there. Looks like he uh, leans right into the defensive player, but they uh, didn't call it. 
Jepson thought about the three. He wants to shoot it. He looks like a player that, uh, with limited minutes, he wants to get the ball up if he can. He was the Class A player of the year a year ago. Watkins steps into the lane and hits. That's penetration again. Cartmill penetrated, kicked the ball back to Watkins, and the defense has to sink back in to, to stop the penetration, and Watkins gets a easy short little jump shot. He has nine. That's his first bucket of the second half. Well, your die just keeps running around, and he's having a tough, tough time getting a shot. Now it's triangle and two again. Die. Jump step into the lane. That's the call you always want traveling on. Yeah, <laughs> and I still think it's traveling. I still think. A foul <laughs> instead goes against Illinois State. The blocking four foul on Watkins, on Watkins and that's four on Leroy. Stallings wanted traveling too uh, from his vantage point. I could see him down there. <laughs> Well, Bradley offensively is having a problem right now. They're not really getting good shots, and they're not uh, real sharp offensively, but uh, the game's only four points, so it's still anybody's ball game. Kevin Stallings forced to put in one big man with four fouls for another man, big man with four fouls. Riley replaces Watkins. Bradley needs to do something to get the crowd back in the game. Uh, Rob Dye misses his first free throw attempt of the night. And now a foul on Jepson. Even Rob Dye can't hit from the line. Well, the question is going to be, can Bradley make any of the free throws? Right now, they've missed enough free throws to, you know, to be ahead in this basketball game. But that's why they shoot him, I guess, Lee, instead of just giving them to you. The good news for Bradley now is they are in the double bonus. Kevin Clancy goes to the line from Niles, Notre Dame. The same high school that gave Bradley Jimmy and Tommy Less. Clancy, an 82% free thrower. His okay. first point of the night. Crowd gives him a big hand because uh, Bradley has not done well here the second half shooting free throws, but uh, a lot of time left in this game. You can turn that around real quick. Kevin played for Dennis Zelasko up at Niles. Misses the second. Yeah. It's only the third free throw that Bradley's made. It's a lot of pressure on you defensively when you don't come away with something on, on a sh shooting call. Three-point Illinois State lead. The Redbirds lost to Bradley at home last month. They're trying to return the favor here. Nine on the shot clock. Four. Bryson with three. Leans in, throws it up. Pearson puts it up. Riley gets the rebound. And a foul will go against Bradley. And I believe it's Abba Coita. Very late whistle there. Foul is on Coita. And we are going to a timeout. It's the third on Coita. 51-48. Bradley down by three. Seven sixteen left, 51-48, Illinois State the lead. They have six three-pointers on the night, Ron. Well, the difference in the game hasn't been the three-pointers the second half. Uh, the, the second half has been a pretty evenly played game, and I think the story for Bradley is the missed free throws, and, uh, and for Illinois State, probably the foul trouble that they're big men are in. Bradley now three of nine at the free throw line. Bradley Trivia brought to you by your local Ford dealer of Bradley's 10 largest crowds in Carver Arena. How many were against Illinois State? Out of 10, that would be four, including tonight's game, 11,030 the attendance. Here's a look at the free throw shooting. Illinois State 13 of 16. Bradley 33% at the free throw line, and that's not any good for a grade school team. Especially on the home court like that. You pick your home court, you're... The Illinois State ball. And that's not a popular call here. And we've got another timeout. Hall had it, Clancy and... They fought over it. Riley tipped it up off the basket standard, but it's Illinois State ball with 7-12 left.
Illinois State, a three-point lead over Jim Molinari and the Braves. Cellular communications from Carver Arena for tonight's Bradley basketball broadcast made possible by our friends at Alltel. Ron, you talked about the free throw breakdown. Bradley, three of nine for the game, two of seven here in the second half. Right, and actually Illinois State has more fouls, uh, 16 to 13, and, uh, and the, the free throw line is the difference in the ball game right now. Bradley has actually three turnovers in this game, which has got to be the low maybe for three years uh, for Bradley, but uh, Illinois State has nine, so it's, uh, it's a strange uh, it's a strange score for, for the type of the statistics. That's why statistics don't tell the whole story. 7-12 left, Illinois State ball. Lancey's in there, Kevin Cartmill. He's off a quick two. Roberson comes up with the steal and can't hang on. Yep. Be 19 on the shot clock. Eric tries to go with the ball so quickly that he doesn't. Uh, oh, they're going to. They gave him possession. They're going to rewind the clock. I don't think he ever had possession. Well, they're changing it back again. I just, I think if Harry could have just grabbed that ball, Lee, instead of trying to take off with it, he probably would have been able to save it. And to reset the shot clock to 19 seconds. I think that was a correct, uh, correct call. No, he didn't have possession. It's an interesting call Sunday in Illinois State's game against Southern Illinois. The Southern player was able to jump, leap out of bounds, catch the ball, and throw it back, and they said he didn't have possession when he did that. I thought he did. Victor Williams bounces it no good. Roberson the rebound. He's Bradley's leading rebounder, 5.2 a game. Braves down three. Hall hesitated, but makes the basket. He has six. And Bradley's back within one. Well, it looks like it's going to be another one of those games. Oh, it almost like came up with the steal. Almost a foul, too. Bradley has done a better job the second half of uh, defense on the outside shot. Not as soon as I say that. It'll... Shot clock at five. Bryson with three. Now two, leans in with one, no good. Coita the rebound, one-handed. That's well, nine rebounds for Abba Coita. Make that 10. That's a career high. Clancy hits the floor. Good pass, Coita to Hall, and Bryson knocks it out of bounds. Jim Molinari wants a foul as Reggie Hall is I see Zetcher says it's all ball. pain as he gets up. He said all ball, but how can his finger hurt then if it's all ball? <laughs> now, that's a medical question I can't answer. <laughs> I don't either, right? <laughs> Sean Riley's a pre-med major. Let's get him out there. There he is. Ask him. I thought he had a broken hand uh, the, uh, the way he was... Uh, Laying in pain on the ground there, uh, under the basket. Lee in for Hall. And when your name's Lee Hall, you love that as an announcer. Well, Watkins. Illinois State's going with their, both of their big men now, both of them with four fouls with uh, five minutes and 44 seconds to play. Really no choice for Kevin Stallings in that situation. Both of them with four fouls with not that much time left. Well, that was a Bradley turnover. They haven't had many of them. No, and they can't afford many with the way they're uh, doing offense. Rob Dye has not scored a point in the second half, and, uh, you know, that's tough. Uh, uh, Watkins inside, foul on Roberson. Two on Eric Roberson, 16 foul on Bradley. Well, Illinois State will be in the, uh, they, they shoot two this time, but they'll be in the bonus uh, on the next ball. Leroy Watkins at the line. I, I mentioned this earlier and didn't really get to finish it, Ron. Uh, 
Leroy lost that year of eligibility as a freshman. He originally signed with DePaul. And then was uh, Prop 48, but then got that year of eligibility back because he graduated in four years. So right. it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a great story and a, a, a great compliment to just his uh, tenacity and staying with it. Well, the NCAA changed the rule while he was in uh, while he was a student, and uh, and then consequently he took advantage of that uh, when they changed it. The first member of his family to get a college degree, 52-50. The Illinois State lead is two with 5.05 to play. Clancy drives and gets double team. At this stage, you've got to say Illinois State's done a great job on Rob Dye because he's really having a struggle to get a shot. He still is. Shot clock at five. Clancy puts up from three. Oh and Coeta pulls Sean Riley down, which isn't easy to do. That's four on Coeta. And Illinois State is in the bonus. Pearson in for Watkins. Riley will go to the line, and we mentioned that he is money there. Yeah, he's one of the top shooters in the, in the nation. Free throw or any place. He's shooting percentage overall is just excellent. That's only his fifth point of the night. He had 20 in game one with Bradley. He hasn't had many shots, so uh, Lee, and uh, in the first game, uh, he played outside a lot because they had Murdoch playing inside, and he was able to get the outside shot down. Illinois State's lead is four. Well, he's got to find some way to get, manufacture some shots. They're not getting very many shots. That's the that first open shot that Dice had. And he nails it. 15 points tonight for Rob Dye, and he gets Bradley back within one. Clancy almost comes up with the steal. Roberson ties it up. Should be Bradley Ball. Defense caused the jump ball. That's a new rule this year. Defensive tie-up. Great play by the junior, Eric Roberson. Comes Watkins back in now. I think I think Kevin probably is going to leave the two big guys in there because there's, really there's not enough time left, and if one of them falls out, you still got the other one. Bradley down one. Inside give to Coeta, thinks the better of it against Riley. Roberson almost loses it out of bounds. Pull up jumper, no good. Hall there for the follow. Reggie Hall, nearing a career high, he has eight. Well, that got and the Bradley fans. has the lead, their first of the second half. Now their first since it was 42 to 40. That got the Bradley fans uh, back in this ball game, and the fans are I really is the medal here, and uh, they haven't really been in this thing tonight too much. As Illinois State's been ahead most of the game. 325 left. Illinois State looking for just their third road win of the year. Bryson yeah. Yeah. drives on Clancy. Clancy picks up the personal. And he had the, he had the angle on Clancy, and uh, there was no defensive help coming over. They do as good a job, Illinois State, of running their. Uh, their 10 second offense uh, to come up with a good shot. They either get fouled, they drop the ball off to a wide open guy for a layup, or, or they kick it out for the three. They've got a, a great little offense there when they get down to the final 10 seconds. Bradley's played great defense for 25 seconds, and, and then they come out of it. Ooh, what a break. That was a break for Bradley. Bryson's missed two of his last three from the strike. I like how, oh. All for three. A little bit out of his range. Well, I don't think, I don't think, don't follow him. I don't think Reggie should have taken that shot, but that's, uh, Coach Mo feels the same way. <laughs> Jim Molinari says, what are you taking that shot for? It's tough to pass them up when you're yeah. that wide open in a that's game hard. like this. The day's going to come when Reggie Hall's probably going to hit that shot on a consistent basis. 
258 left. 55-54 Bradley. What will the Y2K situation mean to you if you plan to travel at the end of the year into 2000? It could mean a lot. Find out more on Y2K and travel in a special report tonight on News 25 Nightside at 10. I think each team has had one three-point shot the second half, Lee. And that's where Illinois State has gotten killed on the offensive boards this year. A minute to go. In the second half, Creighton leads Northern Iowa by 17. Evansville already a winner tonight. Bradley down a game and a half in the standing. Williams had it knocked away by Roberson. Looked like a clean block. But Roberson's whistled for his third foul. Take another look. Well, it was difficult to see that. Well, it was hard to tell. It, it could have been a foul. When you come over the top like yeah. that, a lot of times you're going to get whistled he for He probably it. got the ball, but he probably got a piece of his wrist, too. Well, that probably was a good call. 74% free thrower. Victor Williams, the freshman. Well, and now Illinois State is catching whatever Bradley has at the line. They've been watching the Bradley free throw shooters, and they're trying to help him a little bit, I guess. Williams makes the second. We've got a timeout on the floor, 2.51 remaining in regulation, all tied at 55. Two fifty-one left in regulation, nothing decided yet. Illinois State and Bradley tied at 55. And tonight's News 25 extra special look at the Bradley ISU rivalry along with tonight's game to your home video collection. Send 2195 to War on 74, care of WEEK 2907 Springfield Road, East Peoria, 61611. Well, the free throw, uh, Illinois State 17 for 23 from the free throw line, Bradley's 3 for 9. And, and it certainly isn't because the officiating has been one sided. They certainly have called, uh, actually called, uh, Fouls are about even on each team, so that isn't the problem. Bradley's just missing the free throws, and Illinois State's getting fouled when they shoot, so they're all theirs are shooting fouls. And Bryson and Riley keep going to the line, it seems like. But Illinois State hasn't shot as well in the field the second half, but I think that's a little bit because Bradley tightened up the defense. They're both, uh, Illinois State's 42% and uh, Bradley's 43%. Only one team has shot better than 40% from the field here in Carver Arena this season. That was Wichita State. That's one out of 11. He's playing Reggie inside. Well, I don't... Uh, Bradley's kind of... Let Rob Dye go to work with seven on the shot clock. Leans in. Puts it up over Riley. Can't get it. Kawita had it. Now Dye gets it back. Abba Kowit is Bradley's leading offensive rebounder, and he got a hand on that one to keep it alive for the Braves. Well, that wasn't a good shot. In fact, I think I think Dye traveled there. Kowita tripped over the three-point line. Clancy around the screen. Pass inside, tipped away. Who wants it? Leroy Watkins comes well, away with it. That, that wasn't a very good offensive set for Bradley there. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, they were trying to get there, but that uh, certainly didn't get anything out of that. First place, Clancy's got to shoot the ball. They can't just let... Uh... Back cut by Bryson, blocked. Bradley on the run. Who blocked that? Roberson got the block and then has his shot blocked. Here's Bryson. No Clancy foul. tried to block it, but Bryson scores the layup, and it's an Illinois State two-point lead. Bryson with 16. Jim Molinari wants timeout with a minute 14 yeah. left. Bradley's last uh, couple of possessions offensively have not been very good, and uh, they have no one to blame but themselves. They can't blame the officials because uh, they're calling them the same way both ways. And 22nd timeout for Jim Molinari's Braves. Actually, Eric had no place to go there. Roberson and... Uh, Great block by Roberson. Yeah. As long as they call them both ways, you can't argue about the officiating. 
I don't Roberson know where he... tried to drive Riley, and Riley got a hand on well, it. Well, he's trying to get fouled. He's trying to make something happen, and and they haven't done a good job, Bradley, running their offense here the last uh, three minutes of the game here. Final score, Southwest Missouri State over Southern Illinois, 72-68 in overtime. The Bears come to Peoria Saturday night. So Southwest is now 9-5. Bradley needs a win or they would be tied for second with Southwest. Bradley's just not getting very many good shots. Die had one good shot the second half and he hit it. One minute left in regulation. Hall up strong. Can't get it. Gets his own rebound. Goes up again and he'll go to the line. And that's five on Leroy Watkins. Watkins fouls out with 10 points and four rebounds. <laughs> and if you don't watch a lot of Missouri Valley Conference basketball and you don't know about these two schools. If you haven't watched a lot of their games or know a lot about their history, you probably think, well, that's just a couple of announcers pumping up the rivalry down there in the cornfield country. But let me tell you what, this is like this just about every time these two teams meet. Watkins goes to the bench. Maybe the last Bradley ISU meeting of his career pending the Missouri Valley Conference tournament later this month in St. Louis. Well, the uh, the game may not, artistically, you know, the, the game probably wasn't played as well the second half as it was the first half, but uh, but nobody can say that it wasn't played uh, hard, and uh, and certainly the officials didn't have any uh, determination on the outcome. Bradley missed a lot of free throws. Reggie Hall, 59% free thrower. His first free throw attempt of the night, bounces good. That ties a career high for the sophomore out of St. Mel. And Kevin Stallings calls timeout. A 20 second timeout 20 seconds. for Kevin Stallings with 55.6 seconds left. Bradley will get the ball back regardless. It's uh, at least a two-possession game here. Join Ron and me here on WEEK for our next Bradley Braves telecast. Saturday, February 20th, the Braves go for the sweep against Wichita State. Shockers have had their problems lately. Maurice Evans is back in uniform. We'll have all the action live from Wichita Saturday, February 20th, a week from Saturday at 7.30 right here on WEEK 25. What do you do here if you're Bradley, Ron, if, if Hall makes it? You, you got to just play tough defense, and, you know, and of course, Illinois State will at least try to get fouled and try to get to the free throw line at least. And then, uh, you know, they're a pretty good free throw shooting team, and Bradley will have to try to get the ball without, uh, without a score change and hope you get the last shot. For the tie. Reggie Hall, a career high with the game. On the line, steps up and hits two free throws. We're tied with 50 seconds left. Twenty second difference in the game well, shot, game clock and the shot clock. Bradley will get the ball back and have plenty of time to get a shot off. It's the question of whether Illinois State scores. It looks like they're gonna wait and another fantastic finish for Bradley and ISU. Jerome Robinson, the steal. Quickly ahead, the layup, and Bradley has a two-point lead with 22.9 left. Stallings is going to call. Oh, no, he's not going to call a timeout. Stallings opts to go, and Williams missed it. Here comes Bradley, Roberson. Oh. Lost it out of bounds. Eric. With 7.3 left. Plenty of time for a good shot. 7.3 left. Bradley's lead is two, but ISU has the ball.
7.3 seconds left in Peoria. Bradley, a 59-57 lead. Offense from defense here. Jerome Robinson comes up with the ball in the layup and gives Bradley the lead. Bradley had a chance to ice it, but Eric Roberson couldn't hang on to the pumpkin. There's a case, though, that uh, he, the defensive player had pretty good position. He should have just brought the ball back out, and, and he could have held it for about another four or five seconds. And then Illinois State would have had the foul, and then there would have only been maybe two seconds left in the game, and, and uh, it would have been difficult. But now Illinois State, seven seconds is plenty of time to get a good shot off, or, or a foul. Most game coverage of the war on 74 coming up immediately following the conclusion of this ball game here locally on WEEK. Now I think a foul will have to be a pretty good one or they won't call it. I don't think it'll, it'll just be a touch foul. And Illinois State is in the double bonus on the next Bradley foul. Jepson with it, the freshman. Gives to Bryson. Puts it up for the tie. And we've got overtime. Tyrese Bryson. The sophomore out of Stephen Decatur ties it up, and we're going to play at least another five minutes. Uh, Coach, Coach Malinari wanted a, a travel, and he probably did, but they're not going to call a travel in that case, Lee. They're not going to call it. He took about three steps there, but they just don't call it in that case when the, when the ball game's on the line, and I, I think that was the correct call. We'll be back with overtime from Peoria in just a minute. It's another classic 59-59 and we're going to overtime. In our half hour pregame special, the War on 74, we looked at some of the best ball games in this series and a lot of them went down to the wire. Hersey Hawkins beat Illinois State at the wire in Tulsa. Jimmy Les tied the game and sent it to overtime here in Peoria in 86. Anything. Barney Mines hit a bucket with four seconds left at Horton Fieldhouse back in 82. Sonny Roberts made a bucket here with five seconds left for Illinois State back in the early 90s. Another classic here tonight, 59-59. Leroy Watkins is on the bench as Rob Dye hits the bucket. Just his second since halftime. And Riley's playing with four fouls, so Illinois State is, uh, foul-wise, is in a uh, worse position than Bradley here. Illinois State has not played an overtime game this season. Bradley is 1-0. And Cartmill turns it over. Matthew Lee is the, uh, Matt Lee has four fouls, and Kalita has four fouls for Bradley. But they still have uh, Kirch, uh, to come in and back them up, and then Reggie Hall can, can play in there, too. Especially if Riley gets out of there, then they're, they're back down the side. i tell you, Bryson's a better defensive player than I, uh, than I thought he was, I'll guarantee you. Oh, nice pass to Coeta, has it blocked by Pearson. Here comes Illinois State with a chance to tie or take the lead with a three. Victor Williams for three, in and out, Kawita with the rebound, he's got Royal. And a foul on Riley is his fifth, he can't believe it. I'm not so sure about that one either, and neither can Coach Stallings, I think he was a... Uh, that looked like that one could have gone uncalled because they haven't called many like that. It looked like a jump ball from that angle. Yeah. Well. I think it didn't even have to be called a foul, though. But you just don't know when the official's going to call a foul anymore, and I don't think that. I think they've worked a pretty good basketball game, really, considering the degree of difficulty. Riley and Watkins, Illinois State's two big men, both foul out. Riley leaves with six points. And it's... Ryan Crowley replacing him. It's 11 rebounds for uh, Abakuia, and uh, that's probably his career high. 
Oh, I could see that one. I told him before the game they were going to be watching in Chicago. And <laughs> That's 5 for 12 for Bradley from the free throw line. This game would be over if Bradley had shot their free throws, even at a 50% clip. Well, Coeta with six points. Bradley's lead is three. Bryson takes it to the hole, missed it. Coeta the rebound. Well, I'll tell you what. I've never seen Coeta rebound like he has the past few games. Uh, he may turn out to be a pretty good player for Bradley before, his, before he's out of here. And the whistle against Illinois State's Kyle Cartmill. They seem to really give the, the break to the offensive player when they jump right into you. And I, and I always think that's offensive, an offensive foul when they jump right into the defensive player. But they seem to call it that way both ways. Three on Cartmill, Reggie Hall at the line. He's already got a career high 10 points tonight. Well, Bradley's not making it easy, I'll tell you, on the coach. The poor coach is... <laughs> gets about 20 more gray hairs every missed free throw. How did uh, your Thornridge team shoot him? Pretty good. For, for a high school team, I, uh, you know, got him pretty as good as a... Most college teams do. 63-59 in overtime. Three minutes. Uh... Tyrese Bryson hit the bucket that sent us to the extra five minutes. <laughs> Ten on the shot clock. Illinois State's run this weave out at the three-point line. Cartmill has it stolen away. I'm not sure if it was Dyer or Roberson who got either. a hand on that. I didn't see that either. I was watching uh, both those players in the top ten on Bradley's career steals list. Reggie Hall has the size advantage on Crowley. Good ball movement this time by Bradley. They're not going. They're not going away from uh, Dye though. Die with seven on the shot clock. Pulls it up off the dribble and hits for three. 20 points for Rob Die, and Bradley is unbeaten this year when he hits the 20 point mark. Well, that was a clutch shot. The clock was running out, and Die pulled up and hit a perfect three pointer there. Rob Die barks at the crowd. Kevin Stallings barks at the officials. A minute 56 left in overtime. Bradley a commanding seven point lead. A buck 56 left in overtime. Bradley 66 59. Not a commanding lead, Ron Ferguson says. Uh, there's no such thing as a commanding lead to a coach or an ex coach or an old coach, I guess. You might qualify me as all three. Rob Dye. Struggled early in the season with his shooting, Ron, and then all of a sudden the light came on and he found that shot off the dribble and he can free himself up with that and he has really yeah. been Bradley's leading man all season long. Yeah. I think Bradley has to be a uh, do here is not, not to pick up some silly fouls and stop the clock and put Illinois State to the free throw line. They got to make him earn it with field goal. 7 nothing, Bradley in the overtime. That keeps the clock moving a little bit. Illinois State has not scored in the extra period. Watkins and Riley, they're big men, both fouled out. Crowley missed it. Stallings wanted a foul. And it's Illinois State ball. As the ball hit the standard. Either that or, or uh, Hall was standing on the end line. I, here you can see it here. I thought the official pointed up. I don't know. Well. Inside, Crowley the follow. He has seven. 66-61. Illinois State, the full court pressure, and Hall is whistled for the charge. <laughs> Reggie Hall whistled for the charge after he had gotten rid of the ball. Well, I'll tell you, that's why you never, 
As Yogi Bear said, it's never over till it's over. Both teams at the double bonus. Three personals on Reggie Hall. Kenneth Pearson will go to the line. Four of nine there this season. He hasn't played much this season because of injuries also. Adam Shires probably coming in for Reggie. Baraba. Yeah, they want to get some ball handling in there and some free throw shooters. Abba Coita gets a nice hand, a career-high 12 rebounds. We'll have Abba back in there uh, if he gets a chance to substitute defensively. One Pearson makes the free throw. Four it's points. a three-point game. Bradley facing the pressure. How they handle it will have a big impact on this ball game. Shire comes up with a tough pass, but he hauled it in. And the whistle on Victor Williams. Illinois well, State's got a quick team in there now, and they're doing really a good job. Bradley was very fortunate to get the ball down the floor that time. I'm sorry, it's a four-point ball game. Die at the line. I have him now 0 for 2 at the line. Is that correct? Yeah, he had a one and one, and he missed uh, he missed the first of uh, one and one. He is third in the valley in free throw shooting, 85 percent, and he's 0 for two there tonight. The junior from Springfield boy, Southeast boy. can't buy it. Well, a minute six left. It's not over yet, Yogi Berra. Victor Williams gets Illinois State within two, and they call timeout. And Illinois State gets it. Uh, it didn't appear they called timeout before Bradley got the ball in, but they are granted the timeout with 59 seconds left. Stallings is out of 20s. It's a full timeout, 59 seconds left. A two-point ball game in overtime. Back at Carver Arena, Jim Molinari's commanding seven point lead is now down to two. <laughs> well, Bradley had a chance. Uh, Rob Dye, you know, who's our best free throw shooter, Bradley's best free throw shooter, missed both free throws, which is uh, unusual, but there's a lot of unusual things. Uh, Illinois State's missed some, some easy shots and turned the ball over a couple times too, so that's why they, uh, why they keep playing the games, I guess. Bradley is seven for 16 at the line. That's just under 44%. Excuse me, seven for 17. Shooting better from the floor than they are from the free throw line. Bradley the inbound, Shire gives to Robinson. He's fouled by Williams. Victor Williams, his fourth. Robinson will go to the line to shoot two. Now somebody is gonna to have to step up for Bradley and make some free throws. They certainly did over at Northern Iowa to miss a free throw right. in the second half. So. It's hard to understand. And they were eight for eight in the overtime. Right. It's just hard to understand what happens uh, some nights, uh, especially when you're playing at home. I can see that happening more on the road. Robinson home. is 79% at the line. He missed his first attempt there tonight. Hits that one. He did not play in the first Bradley, Illinois State meeting because of that knee injury. And he bounces that one in and Bradley's lead is back to four. 53 seconds left. Well, he, well, he doesn't want to foul here again. Williams inside Boy. to Crowley, quick two with 45 seconds left. Illinois State within two. Eric Roberson fouled by Williams. He is out of the ball game. With all due respect to Eric Roberson, however, they fouled the right guy. He is only 61%. He's one of two there tonight. Well, here's the chance to atone for uh, for the error he made in regulation play there when uh, he lost the handle on the ball and uh, and uh, probably could have stalled most of the rest of the, the game out. Watkins, Riley, and now Victor Williams is fouled out for Illinois State. 
I think and he talked about in the open, Ron, foul trouble was a key, and that's yeah. hurt Illinois State here tonight. Yeah, foul trouble hurt Illinois State, but the Bradley hasn't capitalized, so it's been kind of a kind of a war. If you'd like to add tonight's News 25 Extra, looking at the Bradley ISU rivalry to your home collection along with tonight's ball game, send 2195 to War on 74, care of WEEK, 2907 Springfield Road, East Peoria 61611. Eric Roberson at the free throw line. 20 points in game one against the Redbirds, six of six from behind the three point arc. Both teams are in the double bonus, so. And we mentioned in the Northern Iowa game, that takes a little bit of pressure off a guy at the line. Sure does. There's the Illinois State three that have fouled out. And it's funny, they only had three or four fouls at, uh, at the first half, so it's a, that's a strange. Uh, yeah. Roberson perfect at the line. He has 14. It's his first game in double digits. In a week or so, at least. 70 to 66. Bradley leads it with 44 seconds to play. Lee Hall, Ron Ferguson back at Carver Arena in Peoria. Bradley leading Illinois State 70 to 66 in overtime. It's Illinois State's ball. Well, Bradley finally got to uh, 500 at the free throw line. They're 9 for 18 now when uh, Eric Roberson hit the two free throws. And, and I'm glad for Eric that, uh, that he did that because I know he feels bad about uh, losing the handle on the ball at the end of regulation. But uh, he's a competitor. But the game's still a long way from, from being over. So Bradley's going to have to make a defensive stop, I think, there somewhere. It's interesting that Bradley had the chance to win the game at Northern Iowa in overtime, was able to collect themselves after giving up a game-tying shot and win it in overtime. So they've got that experience that they can do something like that. Well, Bradley's got a small team in here now, but so far so does Illinois State because their big guys are all out of the game. There's I, the time left in overtime. They're just going like, to probably let Cartmill and Bryson just kind of take over this game here. But Bryson for three. Ah! Off the mark, Roberson just rebound. <laughs> he just wants to go, go, go. Before he gets the ball, he wants to go. Sean Jepson whistled for the foul at half court. But where would Bradley be without Eric Roberson, the Predator? Well, Illinois State's playing a little bit of a disadvantage now. They've got three of their, of their top players that are not in the ball game now. And uh, certainly with their lack of depth because of injuries, uh, this is not the same Illinois State team out here, but yet they've still got three or four guys that can really put the ball in a hole. Die 0 for 3 at the line tonight. <laughs> Illinois State is out of timeouts. Die hits them both. He has 22. Bradley a six-point lead. Jepson for three, off the mark. Bryson the rebound. He puts it up with 13.8 left. And Bryson has to foul die. Pearson was slow getting up, but play continued. 11.2 left. Bradley by four. Well, the one thing that Bradley's done here that's been very smart is they haven't picked up some silly fouls and stopped the clock and put Illinois State at the free throw line. They've given up some easy baskets, but at least the clock keeps moving. And Rob Dye is back. I'm not sure who that was in his uniform a while ago, but uh, <laughs> he hasn't missed three in a row all year. Well, Bradley depends so much on Dye for so many things. You know, they want the ball in his hands all the time. It's uh, too bad there's not two Rob Dyes, but he would love to have two. So would anybody. And so would someone like to have Tyrese Bryson and some of the players that Illinois State has. They have some excellent basketball players and have an excellent team. They just have been they just been hurt a lot this year by injuries and and uh, and Rico Hill deciding to play professional basketball and uh, that's just certainly changed the makeup of this fine basketball team. You know there are two Rob guys. There are His dad, yeah. Oh, that's right. He was a star at Western back in the seventies. I don't. I think he he's, out of player. he's out of eligibility, though. I remember him, and he was a fine player. 4.5 left. 
Don't foul him. Just let him take it in. Bryson takes it to the hoop. Cuts it to four. And that'll do it. The war on 74 ends in a 74-70 win for Bradley. So long to our friends on Fox Sports Chicago. 74-70, the final Bradley in overtime Good over night. Illinois State. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. Back at Carver Arena, 74-70, the final in overtime. Bradley, the winner. Tonight's Dodge player of the game is Abakawita. Unofficially, we had him for 13 rebounds. Ron, a career high for the junior out of New Trier High School. I think that's a career high for uh, for uh, anybody for Bradley this year, and, uh, and that's really uh, a sign of good things to come for Bradley. Finally, they hit some free throws in the overtime and and uh, and won the game. But they they didn't win the game against Illinois State's regular team. Though uh, most of the regulars had fouled out and uh, and it's unfortunate uh, had to go to overtime for Illinois State. But uh, Bradley was dominant because they had uh, all of their players still to play with. Six points for Abakoida, and as we mentioned unofficially, 13 rebounds. Uh, if Bradley had shot their free throws tonight around, we might not have had the extra period. I uh, and. And Eric Roberson had an opportunity in, uh, in regulation maybe to ice the game too. But you know, uh, you can't just blame the things that happened at the end of the game. There's a lot of things that took place earlier that, that you don't go back and remember that probably were bigger factors than that. And, uh, and the other thing is I think Bradley, you've got to give Bradley credit for, for playing a lot better defense the second half in Illinois State. They didn't get as many uh, easy open looks the second half as they did the first half. Yeah, 50% for Illinois State from the floor in the first half. Uh, they were down around 33% there in the second. Right. And... Uh, so I don't. I think I still think Illinois State, when they get uh, get all their players completely healthy, they're going to be as good as any team down in St. Louis. Bradley now all alone in second place in the Missouri Valley Conference, a game behind Evansville. The Aces won earlier tonight. So did Southwest Missouri State. The Bears are in third place, and they come to town Saturday night. And here's a chance, you know, for Bradley to put some distance away from uh, Southwest Missouri and, and even uh, Creighton. Uh, and it's a home floor again, and Bradley has continued to, to defend the home court. And if Bradley can defend the home court all the way out and run the table at home, uh, it won't make so much difference. Uh, naturally, you want to win on the road. But that certainly will put him in really good position to finish no worse than second in the Missouri Valley. Well, our slogan here on uh, WEK News 25 is your home team. And, and that's what Bradley has been there, 12-0 and 0 now at home here. Uh, we don't have the final stats yet, but uh, going into tonight's ball game, only one team had shot better than 40% here on the Carver Arena floor. Well, and, and, and Illinois State probably came close because they, they were like three for three or four for four right near the end there when Bradley was letting them shoot the baskets to avoid the fouls. But uh, I think the people, I, don't, I didn't see anyone leave, did you? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think everybody stayed and, uh, and uh, had a good time here and uh, the only places that will be hurting will be the restaurants. <laughs> The, uh, this game will go into the annals of Bradley, Illinois State history, don't you think? Uh, as one of the fantastic finishes, Tyrese Bryson uh, might have traveled, might not have, doesn't matter. He made the shot. He stuck it uh, with time running out and uh, sent Illinois State, an, an outmanned Illinois State team, to overtime against the second place team in the conference, and that's nothing to sneeze at. Not at all, and, and, and they sh uh, even if he did travel, they shouldn't have called it. <laughs> when it means the game like that, you don't, uh, you don't make a call like that. It, Unless you're 100% sure of the call, don't make it because let the players decide who wins. And and I think the officials did that pretty much tonight. And and then, as they say, Illinois State got hurt with uh, with fouls and didn't have their players in the game, and it, it enabled Bradley then, of course, to move ahead of them on the boards and wound up out rebounding Illinois State. And Illinois State had a pretty good rebounding lead the first half, but then when they lost their players, they couldn't maintain that. I want to get your take on this. Is it interesting? I I find it. I don't know if amazing is the right word, but it's very interesting. Uh, what a difference a die makes. Rob Dye hit that shot in normal last month. Since then, uh, Bradley has now gone 6-1, and one, and Illinois State's gone 1-6. and six. It's just amazing how one game can, can really turn your season and give confidence to your younger players. And, and it isn't so much that Bradley's got so many younger players, but they've got inexperienced players because people like Matt Lee and, and Abba Kuita, they haven't, even though they've been around for a while, they haven't really played much in the games. You know, Abba, uh, Adebayo can calculate dominated the time you know in the pivot last year and uh, those players didn't get a chance to play and then you have Milo Kirsch in there and you have Reggie Hall and those players just haven't had any experience and and so I think that really gave them a lot of uh, confidence to go over and win that one at Illinois State. Illinois State uh, 
I would say a valiant effort tonight uh, in spite of their injuries. I know Kevin Stallings won't be making any excuses in the, in the post-game commentary, but uh, this is a team without L.D. Murdoch, without Richard Van Velzen. Uh, Bryson, as amazing as he is, has been playing on one leg all year. Well, they've been the, Illinois State's been the hard luck team this year. They've, uh, you know, they've lost two close ones to us that could have gone either way. You know, uh, you, you, th you put those two games in the win column, and then the two games that uh, Tyrese Bryson didn't play were possibly games they could have won had he played. And, you know, you just win three out of those four of those games, and Illinois State's right up there with the rest of us, you know, fighting for the top three or four spots in the conference. So it's a fine line, you know, between, uh, you know, from the uh, outhouse to the palace, we call it. <laughs> Spoken like a guy who is probably old enough to remember the outhouse. Who's, who's, <laughs> been, bo who's, who's been both places. 74-70, <laughs> the final here in overtime. Uh, we haven't uh, given out our Bradley Dodge player of the game. A $250 gift given to the Bradley BU Blast Life Skills Program, where brave student-athletes are building leadership, supporting teams to develop a better foundation for tomorrow's youth. Abba Kawita, our player of the game, for his rebounding efforts tonight. And he did a yeoman job there. He was in foul trouble early in the game and still managed to to hang in there and really was tough on the board and didn't, I don't think he lost the ball that he got his hands on. Bradley 15 and 7, now 10 and 4 in the Missouri Valley Conference. Illinois State drops to 13 and 12, 5 and 9 in the conference. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for News 25 Nightside coming up next. Night, Chloe.